Hey guys, I'm going to do a three month review of my Philip Kingsley hair loss journey as promised. If you're watching for the first time, don't worry, you don't need to go back and watch like the first initial after the consultation and after the first month and second month. You can do, I'll put the links to the other videos there, but I'll kind of fill you in really quickly. So I had kind of massive hair loss after COVID. About three months afterwards, it started really, really suddenly. I'm talking like massive hair loss. I had like really thick hair density and kind of volume wise. And I was losing about three giant clumpfuls, like handfuls of hair every single wash. I was brushing it and it was literally just coming out. And obviously when you're losing hair, it might sound vain, but it was really, really kind of like, it's not, I want to say traumatic, but it is really upsetting because I think we've attached so much to our hair and especially when you're used to having it. So I kind of reached out to Philip Kingsley as they were the trichologist recommended to me. They put me on my routine. So I'm going to tell you how it's been going and then I'm going to show you before and afters at the end and you can decide for yourself whether it's worth it or not. I will say in taking all of this into consideration, I am four figures in. So it's not a cheap way of going about replacing your hair, trying to get it to grow back, really dealing with hair loss. But personally, I feel like I like it because it's so holistic. It looks at your nutrition. It looks at your supplements. It looks at your hair care. I'm really kind of treating it from the root, trying to get the roots as healthy as possible. So I like that kind of aspect to it. And I personally have seen results. So that's why I'm sticking to it. There are some things I've got lazy about. But anyway, let me kind of fill you in on everything. So these are two of the products they gave me to start with. They're non-prescription. Anyone can order them off of their website. It's the bodybuilding shampoo and the moisture balancing conditioner. The only thing, I love the smell of them. They don't leave a residue. I will say I kind of felt like the volumizing shampoo, it leaves it with volume, but it did make my hair feel a bit dry. And I know it says moisture balancing conditioner, but it wasn't making my hair feel conditioned. It was making it feel quite dry, as you can kind of probably see. So because of that, what they added to my routine, she says going through all the products, is the Elasticizer Booster. So I'm still using the Elasticizer Deep Conditioning Treatment, which is a pre-shampoo treatment. But during the week, I can either, there's two ways you can kind of use the Elasticizer Booster. That's a mouthful. Elasticizer Booster. There's too many S's and Z's in there for me. And um, you can either kind of layer it over the conditioner. They said layer it over that and then just wash it out like normal or use it kind of once a week in between your weekly hair mask treatment that they've given me as kind of just like a restoring hair mask. So that's what I've been using for extra condition. I still think I want something heavier. So I think they're gonna swap the volumizing shampoo to the moisturizing one. So what I really, really like about this is they don't just kind of like prescribe something and leave you to it. They do do regular check-ins and I do have to meet with a trichologist again in August just to review everything, see if we need to change up anything, especially the prescription. So I'm still doing the weekly mask, which is the H1 scalp cream, which is prescription for me, and then the elasticizer pre-shampoo treatment, which anyone can buy online. So basically I put these on wet hair before I wash and condition my hair. And then I pay special attention to these fine bits around the front because that's where I tend to get a lot of breakage. So I'm really trying to prevent that. And I find it easier when applying the elasticizer treatment to work from the top of my hair to the bottom to make sure I kind of haven't missed everything. And I really work it in around all the lengths, not just on the ends. And then I add a little bit to the ends right at the end, just to make sure I've really covered those as well. I'm very generous with my application. I do use a lot, but I have a lot of hair and I figure if I'm gonna do it properly and spend this amount of money on it, I might as well do it properly. Make sure I'm using enough. So this is what I mean about it being quite a lengthy process. Because I do tend to get some breakage around the underneath, what I tend to do when I feel like I've got it everywhere is use a little bit more on my hands, flip upside down and get it all in there as well and then massage everything. And they say to work it in for a good few minutes or as long as you have time for, then I kind of tie it all up and put it under a shower cap to try and let the heat do its thing and to stop any dripping going on as well. And then once I have those ends all up there, that's when I come in with a little bit more of the elasticizer just to make sure those are really coated as well. So you can leave this on for as little as 20 minutes. I'm gonna, probably gonna leave it on for about two hours. Okay, so that whole process took me nine minutes and 47 seconds because I can see the timer when I was videoing this for you. I've been using those 
And then I have to say it is quite a time commitment. So if you feel like I had to agree when I was doing this, like to get the most out of it to wash your hair every day, which is like, like I talked about before, I kind of went over this in more depth earlier. It was kind of like in other videos, it feels a bit contrary to what we've been taught where it's like, oh, let the natural oils work in. But they're saying because of the density drops and things, they want their products on a clean scalp. With my working out and using infrared sauna, they didn't want it going on a sweaty scalp or letting sweat sit on my scalp. So it was really good <laughs> the first couple of months about washing it every day and doing the drops or at least six times a week. If I was having a day off working out, I might skip the washing and just do kind of the drops. I've been letting it air dry a lot more and kind of scrunching it and wearing it naturally curly a lot more. But I had shingles <laughs> on my face. And so I wasn't working out as much. I didn't have the energy to wash my hair every day. I wasn't going out. I was actually sleeping all day anyway. So I kind of fell off the everyday washing, but I was still good about using my density drops every day. So the density drops are kind of another thing they're famous for. They're non-prescription as well. And you use a little pipette. There's a little one in there that measures it out. And for me, well, there you go. You see it better. They say 2.5 milliliters every day, at least 12 hours between applications. So I'm just kind of like putting it down through each part and then massaging it in. So that's the density drops, which I really like. Things I haven't noticed, but I'm, they might be doing something on a deeper level that I'm not able to see. And I feel like when I send... I had to send my hair in to, to, for them to measure the diameter to make sure it wasn't getting thinner. So I feel like what we're going to see if they work when it goes in is these two products. And they are from the Bond Builder Collection. One's a restorative oil. Now, I was expecting the oil to be like oily and make it feel conditioned like you would a normal oil or serum. It doesn't at all. It literally feels like I'm putting water on my hair. It's a lipid shield. So I was kind of disappointed this wasn't more hydrating. But as long as it's building the bonds and helping prevent breakage i'm good with that and then this is a split end healer and i have to say i've been really really religious about getting my hair cut every six weeks but i definitely feel like i'm seeing less split ends so i prefer this to this but they both do different things it's just because i can see it when you can see things i feel like we're more encouraged to use them and stick with them and you feel like you're getting better value for money my diet i've still been really good with she had me because they do blood work before you start working with them so they can look at really what's going on on a deeper level I was a bodybuilder for years, WBF Earth Pro Diva, and my, I still kind of stick to the bodybuilding diet a lot, very, very high protein, low carb, low fat, and I got very, very lazy. I wasn't doing like full prep, food prep like I would do for a competition where you have a lot of diversity in your diet. I was literally cooking chicken every day and vegetables, like for lunch and dinner. So there was not enough fats in my diet. There was not enough like healthy carbohydrates. I had like quarter of a cup of cooked oats in the morning. So I had to increase kind of like brown rice so to get some really good healthy carbs in there, increase my fat intake. So we put salmon in my diet, we put almond butter in my diet, and also increase my iron. So they, I've always eaten loads of spinach and broccoli, but we put red meat once a week into my diet as well. Like a good quality, kind of like a filet mignon, a good steak, a non-fast food restaurant burger, things like that to really take care of my diet as well. So I've been really, really good about that. And then these were their gelatin supplements. These are prescription as well. These are Philip Kingsley prescription. And I don't know if they make a difference or not, but we will see. So it, it's hard because I'm using so many products to really, really know if it's kind of all of them working together or if it's like one thing that's really doing well. The, other, the one product I don't really like is I'm using their blow dry brush because it's supposed to be the kindest for blow drying your hair for like heat distribution. It's not metal, so it's not overheating. But the only thing I, you can see, I'm not able to get, or I've got naturally curly hair, but I feel like I get, it get, makes my hair a bit frizzy. I don't get a really nice, smooth blowout. It doesn't drag the hair. It goes through it really nicely when you're blow drying it. You can put the bend in it, but it just doesn't get it as smooth as I like. But it does give you volume. So if you have kind of like straight, limp hair, this might work really well for a bit of volume. If yours is more like mine, you might not love the result from it. I've been trying not to use heat styling tongs besides my Dyson hair dryer or my air wrap on them and my air wrap really, really occasionally just when I'm shooting for the blog. So yeah, I mean, I'm gonna keep using it because it's supposed to be healthier and I'm sucking it up, looking, not looking as perfect as I want to get it healthy. So now that I've talked all about everything, I'm gonna kind of show you the before and after. Okay, I'm gonna get really close here because what I want to show you and ignore the halo here. My hairdresser is trying not to use color around the front of my hair, just to protect because what you'll see Look at all this regrowth here. There is tons and tons of like baby hairs. So it's not breakage. That was where it kind of all, oh, hi baby. Stars coming to say hi. All got really fine before and was kind of like receding. That's all grown back in. So to protect that, we're not dying that. 
and the same around this side that was really really thinning in there and there's all those baby hairs in there as well and the same along the top that's not breakage those crazy little spiky bits are the regrowth so that's kind of like really encouraging that i can actually see the little regrowth all happening okay let me give it a quick brush and then i will show you the back of it and then i'll take some pictures and put them side by side because i feel like that's the easiest way to kind of see how it is all going. So that's kind of the back. Like I said, that blow dry brush is not brilliant for kind of like making it smooth and even or making the ends too great, but it's getting there. It feels thick, it's manageable. And then I love the fact you can see all of the growth on there as well. So I'm happy with the results. I was not expecting a miracle. It's not a miracle cure. There's no miracle pill. It's not suddenly gonna get really thick and luscious and long on the ends. It's working from the roots. So the fact that I can see all that regrowth and baby hair is really exciting to me because it means it is all getting thicker in there. There's not kind of as many kind of like bald spots in there or kind of like missing pieces that there was trying to get so you can see it. we're a little bit crazy now anyway i'm going to link everything below except for the h1 scalp cream and their gelatin supplements so the only thing that was prescription everything else you can order on their website if you have any questions drop them in the comments below i'll do my best to answer them if i can't i'll ask someone from philip kingsley to get the answers for you thanks so much for watching if you like this video don't forget to give it a quick thumbs up and subscribe